Oh well folks, so just yet another update. Um, just pretty much just cleaning up some stuff there. I'm actually cleaning up silk screen and things like that now because uh, I'm going to probably send this guy off here shortly. Um, at least maybe if not today, tomorrow, I hope. Uh, if I don't spot anything, uh, uh, spot any other problems. Um, one thing that uh, that is sort of a, a here's a uh, a question for uh, for you guys as far as a thought. All right, so um, I've added USB to this, and uh, this is pretty much just for programming. Um, this, and and it will power it as well. Um, powering this from USB is. Uh, I'm trying to keep the uh, the costs down because the cost of this thing is already pr uh, pretty expensive because of the uh, actually believe it or not the uh, expense uh, the, the two uh, biggest expenses this is the board and the microcontroller the rest of the parts are well piece of piss they just don't cost anything um, uh, and runner up might be the USB connector um, I mean and it's going to probably be more expensive than the, um, uh, the synthesizer as crazy as that sounds. Um, no, actually, the uh, switching regulator that's uh, going to be over here, um, uh, that will be uh, next, then the USB connector, then the synthesizer. Synthesizer is one of the cheaper parts. <laughs> as crazy as that is, but it, it's true. Um, so, uh, you know, um, got it all sorted uh, for the most part. Now this connector down here is going to be for... Uh, I don't know something to plug in, uh, you know, later later date. This this will give me a chance to uh, to experiment uh, with with various things. So that's why this is here. Um, I got some power supplies for it. So um, you know, I've got a spot for a linear regulator. Um, uh, you know, this is going to be the three volts, but um, the USB connector, because um, uh, that's sort of been a uh, a debate. Because somebody dropped me a message. Hey, uh, load load the uh, uh, the uh, application for the uh, microcontroller off of a um, off a flash card. Well, this is a Harvard architecture uh, microcontroller, so you can't do that. Um, you have a bootloader, uh, which I already was uh, mucking around with and found out that that's just there's too many um, unknowns with uh, SD cards because I've got SD cards that will work, SD cards that wouldn't work. It's just too many issues with because uh, I originally had the socket down here on the board. And um, uh, you know, for a micro SD card, it's pretty much um, a bootloader, and then load the uh, will flash the internal um, EEPROM from the uh, SD card. So if the SD card version was greater than what was loaded in flash, it was simply just okay, read the um, uh, SD card and then f reflash itself, um, and that worked. But you know, it it it, it posed some issues when some cards would work, some cards wouldn't work. Um, and uh, it's, it's just too hard. So um, I decided against that, go back to the uh, USB approach. Um, so the USB approach is uh, much safer, um, basically because it's a little bit harder to brick. Um, and you use the flip for that. Um, so uh, you have Atmel, we have flip, and um, I don't have a device plugged in, but uh, you would say it has a demo mode, so you just say demo mode, and okay, I want to talk to it over USB, um, and, and then I can, um, uh, you know, select uh, various uh, bits. Of course, the the program is uh, flaky, so um, depending on where you want to flash. Um, you know what 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 portion of the uh, of the microcontroller you want it to flash you see your um uh, you have ranges and things like that in here but this is this is um going to be uh, uh for your um uh, your uh, eprom uh file that you would load um so i don't know v target device memory um okay i don't i i, I don't normally don't use this in demo mode so um uh, nevertheless, you can um, you can erase it, um, and you can you know program it one and so on and so forth. You can here's where you would load your hex file uh, to uh, to burn into it. Um, so if when you plug in the device, it just shows up and, and you give it the driver, and it's okay. It's a a, a Atmel USB device. Um, in which case, then you can just you can use uh, flip to flash it. So there's the connector, pretty much. Um, the way that this is going to work is 
for those inquiring minds since we're looking at the board layout, which I'm not quite happy with, but um, I mean, it's going to work for prototype. If I clean it up later, clean it up, but um, I'm, I'm sort of never pleased with the with the board layouts. It's just sort of a, a thing with me. Uh, so I've got a USB connector here and it's going to stick out from the cage. So it's possible that you, all you have to have to do is plug the cable into it when it's in the radio and and flash it. Um, the uh, uh, recommendation of course would be to uh, disconnect the uh, power input before you put uh, USB. Uh, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, because if you Inquiring and crafty minds might see you got pin one here, which is going to be your five volts from the um, host machine. And it's going to travel along here. And we got a via here, and then we've got a um, a little power supply here. You see a diode here. We see a um, a resistor. And you see a line called the uh, USB for for the microcontroller detecting that the USB is plugged in. So when the power microcontroller gets powered up, first thing that it does is says, "Okay, am I running on USB?" Um, because if I'm running on USB, I do not want to, uh, uh, you know, fully boot. I want to go, and, and this is being, mind you, when we're booting up, we're booting a bootloader. So when we're booting up, okay, I'm in USB. I won't, it won't exit bootloader. It will stay in bootloader, and you know, so that you can flash it. Um, but also, um, what you got here is we got a resistor to to D minus to to set, set USB, USB parameters. I'll get into that at another time if anybody wants to know. But um, And then we've got this track over here that goes here. And what do we got here? But these are two diodes. Now, this is cheap and dirty. And I've done this uh, in a few places. You're just simply taking five volts to run through two diodes. And then you're going to drop it to three, uh, you know, three and a half volts, which it'll tolerate. Um, and that's basically what I'm doing there. Uh, this is in lieu of using a uh, switching regulator, another switching regulator, and there's, there's two reasons for this. Um, one is that you could go with a linear regulator, and but um, you know with the uh, cap and, and whatnot, the linear regulator, the um, standby quiescent power draw off the USB buses violates USB spec. So we don't want to, um, you know, have some quiescent power going on there. So we don't want to do that. So two diodes, um, if the thing, if the, if the micro is asleep, it's, it's really not going to draw any power. So it's, I'm, I'm trying to as close, as reasonable as possible to stick to it. Uh, you know, USB specifications. I've done this before on my own stuff and it, it's, it's fine. Um, you know, it's not going like it's going to be powered off. The ideal situation would be is, okay, you need to upgrade. Uh, software on this, pull the board out of the radio, or even not even the board, just pull the whole cage out, take it to your computer, plug the USB cable in here, uh, and uh, you know load up Flip and and, and burn the uh, uh, burn the hex file and move on. So you know put it back in the radio and uh, Bob's your uncle as they say. So you know that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, so you know but. And the reason for detecting USB is we, like I said, we don't want to boot, and um, we don't want to run any other peripherals off of this, because this USB can supply, believe it or not, 500 milliamps. Um, in theory, this thing can start and run from the USB bus, um, and, and it would be fine. But I didn't include the power supply for all that, so we're not going to do anything like the display won't start nothing we won't start any anything up we won't actually um you know do anything uh you know only the only thing that will run is microcontroller uh and since a microcontroller commands everything else nothing else will turn on we won't send initialization to the display we won't send initialization to uh the synthesizer we won't initialize uh, whatever the daughter card is we won't do any of that stuff um you know, in theory, at least that's, uh, you know, how it should work. So, eh, you know, it's a prototype. I'm going to get it uh, sent to China. Uh, we're going to get some boards and we're going to see how it works. Um, should be all right. So, uh, but that leads me to another question. Okay. And here's the next uh, tidbit. 
Uh, I've gotten questions, um, and that was me in the background actually dropping the little board that I was going to talk about. Um, people have asked me about this. You know, I, I, I've gotten a few private, you know, emails um, about this. Um, you know, not that many. You know, half a dozen. But um, one of them was, how about you? How about uh, uh, wireless? Okay, so let's look at the 3D view of this thing, just because it's somewhat nicer. Um, so we have a, a, a pin headers here for a card, but what about another, move this up a little bit, which wouldn't be very hard to do that in two, two minutes flat, and then have another location down here for a second uh, card, say USB, not USB, uh, Wi-Fi, wireless. Now, this whole board's going to be inside of a cage, which is hence why you've got this broken um, copper floor here, uh, because, you know, it's a, it's a floating thing, and... Uh, so we've got this broken copper floor, all this wonderful stuff going on, you know, on, on the parts that protrude from the cage. But wireless is not likely to get out of this cage. Um, so, you know, it it will work, but it just won't have that great of range. And maybe it's not an issue, maybe it is, but it's going to have piss poor range. Um, and what I was thinking about doing is... Uh, and we'll just whack these into Google. Um, these uh, 8266s, because I've been looking at these things, and various places have these things. Um, and I was looking for something that was more, you know, module pre-done. So um, now the reason being is because I've actually got a bunch of these, um, and um, you know, we got the the the, the spark fun ones here. Um, See how these have a pin header on them, and that's pretty much what I was thinking about. Um, is one of these you just plug it in, and they're very small. Um, when I tell you small, I mean they're small. Um, I'll just measure the one that I've got in my hand, which is it's it's um, uh, it's actually one of um, one of these with the castellations around the edge. Um, and so it's small. When I mean it's it's uh, um, let's see here, it's uh, 24 millimeters by um, uh, 16 millimeters. So it's pretty small. Um, so I get one of these that can be plugged in, or I just get one with one with the uh, castellations. Um, so if we uh, it, it would go to eBay, and this is where I've gotten them because I I haven't used these in any real like project um but i got I, I get these usually um with the castellations for sort of for my own thing um because i believe it or not as crazy as it might sound i actually have um uh, quite a few little uh wireless devices around the house that um uh, that i've used these in for just for my own little uh gadgets um somebody will have to ask me if Somebody remind me to to talk about my um, uh, sprinklers, which uh, have one of these in them, and uh, I can configure it from a web browser. Um, uh, but yes, I've actually designed and built my own uh, sprinkler controller, <laughs> and so I've got one of these in it, and um, yeah, it works. It works just fine. Um, believe it or not, this module um, has uh, GPIOs and everything. I mean, there's a schematic of it right here that they've got on this. You see all the GPIOs. So you can do your entire sprinkler controller, except I used, uh, I, I did a little bit. I mean, I've got, a, you know, obviously in a real-time clock and things like that. So I've got a real-time clock and I've got all of this, you've got these GPIOs. You could do a fair bit with a, to, uh, to run a sprinkler with this. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's essentially it. So, um, <laughs> I've actually done that. Now, I was thinking about putting one of these, uh, some of these uh, ESP 8266s, but maybe uh, these ones with the uh, with the plug, because you just want to be able to uh, pull it in, take it out, or what have you. Or maybe you don't want it, so you just take it out. Um, and then having a web page, you just go to web browser and uh, whack in the address for the for the radio, and then you can control some um, various parameters of the radio from your uh, web browser. Um, I, I think I might be opening up a can of worms with that one, but uh, it's been suggested, so I figured I'd explore it. Um, so I'll have to pull out the, uh, the stuff for the sprinkler controller. Um, but uh, I did that in Altium. I don't have Altium on, uh, on this computer anymore. 
So um, maybe I can convert the. Uh, I think I can load. I think I can load the Altium stuff in Eagle. I have to try it. Um, I've never done it. Usually, if it's Altium, it's out. I stay in that. But um, uh, anyway, so that's the thought um, and the update and everything else. So you know, move this up. Maybe put a. I think this space right here will probably do just fine. And just the only thing I want to be able. The only thing I want to uh, that I would need to bring over to the uh, microcontroller from this is the. Um, uh, these, these guys have it. They don't have a schematic of this thing. Uh, the previous one did. Um, one with the uh, castellations. Um, it, you see, you've got a um, a serial bus right here, and that's all I would want to use f to talk to the microcontrollers. Just playing um, playing old Ars 232. Uh, this is already TTL, so it's perfectly okay. Just stuff it right into the microcontroller. Write a program for this. Because um, this uses the uh, Lua um, uh, language, so um, it's sort of like a basic-ish thing. And um, uh, you would set up the wireless from the radio. Um, the radio would, uh, you know, ask you for some uh, basic parameters. Um, you know, obviously list out the uh, the wireless uh, uh, access points. Uh, you connect to it. It gets an address. It tells you its address on the display. You go whack that into your browser, and then you can set some uh, set some stuff up uh, for those who are um, you know into that sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, thoughts, questions, comments, um, criticisms. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's kind of it. Um, and. Uh, on the other note here, because we are on the uh, 21st of June, and uh, I have a fair bit of, uh, uh, you know, family um, and uh, and friends that are uh, in the UK, um, I want to touch on uh, Brexit. I know it's sort of a uh, controversial thing. Um, Americans don't really know what Brexit's about, so... Um, you know, other than what they report here in the in the news in America, which is uh, they um, <laughs> they think it's kind of stupid. Um, and honestly, I, I I kind of agree with the Yanks on that one. I think it's kind of dumb too uh, for uh, the for, for the uh, for Britain to leave uh, the European Union. I think it's stupid. Um, UK should stay in. It's just going to cost too much money, cost too much aggravation to. Um, you know, to do that, um, and right now it's sort of a 50-50 split, so um, I uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I don't agree with it. I think that um, uh, I think that the politicians are uh, are playing the public. So anyway, that's my take on Brexit. Um, you know, we could, I could probably ramble on about it for like three hours. It's just not worth it. Um, and for the uh, uh, Americans uh, that don't know about uh, what it's about, don't read it from um, uh, American uh, media uh, news. Just don't. It's a bunch of bullshit that the, the um, Americans report about it. So um, you know, they just it's it's it's. They don't get it right, so just don't do it. Um, you know, of course, you know you've got uh, the uh, predominant news networks here in um, uh, America, uh, which I refer to as the uh, Cable Nothing Network and the Fox Noise Channel, um, which I don't watch. Um, it's just not worth it. So, um, I suggest. That uh, you know, my uh, uh, my countrymen should stay in the European Union, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So, um, anyways, isn't this nice? Uh, well, except for some silk screen, which I need to clean up. But yeah, this 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 uh, actually, because I've changed this thing probably you know 20 times. This actually took a fair bit of work. Um, it, you know, to get this all. Uh, to get this all sorted, it was it was a fair bit of work, um, a fair bit of work on the software mostly, but um, you know I, I need to JTAG to flash the bootloader, 
which is so ironic. And I'm probably going to pull this plug out, this um, uh, IDC connector. I'm probably just going to pull it out. And I'm probably just going to go with something uh, a little less dramatic um, for for maybe a production board instead of having this thing here. I don't have to populate it. I suppose I could just leave it be. It's not hurting anything because it's just... Um, if I needed to flash the bootloader, um, believe it or not, I could just um, take the... Um, the connector and just sort of uh, squash it in there on an angle, punch flash, and since the bootloader is so small, it'll go boop, and you know it'll be done, and then just pull it off, uh, pull it out, um, and move on. So, um, yeah, I could probably just um, uh, make it pads or something. All you need to do is touch it, because um, it's just going to go by really quick, because the bootloader is you know under 2k. So, um, anyway, that's basically it, guys. Um, just going to clean up the silk screen, make some Gerbers, send them off, get them in a month. <laughs> I'll try to get them sooner than that. But anyway, guys, uh, take care for now. Thanks for watching.